Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about how to build DIY cameras. Now, this is going to be the first video in a multi-part series on how to do this. The reason why we want to divide these up is because each one of these different aspects of building a camera really deserve its own video. This video is mostly going to be focused on the hardware aspects that goes into making a camera. And then we'll look at the software side of it in future videos, mainly because there are two different approaches that you can use for building a camera. One is to integrate a camera with something like a DVR, so that requires a different software stack than a camera that would be a standalone security device that does all of its own motion detection and object detection and does all that stuff that a DVR typically does, but it does it on board. So we're going to be looking at those separately, and then we'll be looking at the common hardware they have in this video. So the first board I tried it was this one right here, and this is from Libre Computers. It's the Libre Computer Renegade. It is an octa-core board with four gigs of RAM. Otherwise, it has most of those features a Raspberry Pi has, less the camera interface. Everything else is pretty much the same. It's got GPIO, USB ports, Ethernet port, uh, HDMI out, stereo out, and it's powered by a micro USB port. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same as a Raspberry Pi. Now, this one costs about 45 bucks on Amazon, and they're readily available, and they work fairly well for most everything in terms of what you might do with a Raspberry Pi in terms of pretty much the same kind of performance, but a lot less cost. Now, the second board I tried was this board right here, and this one is from Okido, and it is their Rock 4 C Plus board. And it is similar in spec in terms of the processor to the Renegade. It's got an octa core processor with four gigs of RAM. It has micro SD, of course. It's got four USB ports, two of them are USB 3, Ethernet, GPIO. Uh, this board does support the port for you, uh, Raspberry Pi cameras. And this one also has an EMMC port, which means that you can get better performance storage out of this board as well. And it does support two HDMI ports out as well as stereo, and it's powered by USB-C. And this one costs about 70 bucks on Amazon. It also has built-in Wi-Fi and built-in Bluetooth. So this one has a lot more features on it than the first board I did. But otherwise, the performance characteristics are pretty similar in terms of what you get in terms of CPU performance and RAM performance and what have you. So I want to talk about two different cameras. Uh, there are several cameras that you can use with this, but I want to talk about two extremes. One is the one extreme, which is kind of a high-end USB camera, which can be about $70 to $90. And that is this Logitech C930 right here. And uh, this particular camera right here is a good camera for video conferencing and streaming. It's not something that you would probably use for professional quality video, but it does certainly give some decent pictures and decent sound if you're going to be doing it for a lot of online meetings and things like that. And that's really the intended use case for this guy right here. Um, this one runs for about 70 to $90 and supports 1080p with a decent microphone array. So if you wanted to use sound in your stream, you can definitely use something like this. My biggest complaint, of course, is the cost because there are cameras that are decent quality cameras that are much less. And that might be something like this one right here. And this is just a generic USB camera that I got off of Amazon for, I think, about 12 bucks, And it supports 1080p as well. And it's got a decent mic, too. The biggest complaint about this one is it's pretty wide angle, so it's not the best setup for doing video conferencing with. But if you were going to be building a camera that you wanted to cover a wide angle view, something like this would be very useful for that because it does support, I think, up to about 148 degrees of view. And so uh, you can use either one of these. Now, this one has a lower frame rate than the Logitech does, but otherwise, it's still a great camera for the kind of thing that you might want to use for a security camera. So there's a sundry of issues to figure out once you have your board. Of course, you can use a Raspi, like we mentioned, or you can use a Raspi alternative. I talked about two of them that I've tried and they worked just fine. Now, Raspberry Pi 2 or 3 or 4 would work fine. And this is a Raspi 2, I think. And you can use a camera that is either USB or you can use the Raspi camera. Now, the USB uh, just plugs into a USB port and you're up and running with that with very little fuss. And of course you can use a Raspi camera that looks something like this, and that's going to plug into the camera interface on your Raspberry Pi, or if you're using an alternative that supports these, you can use that as well. Now, once you have your camera and your board figured out, there's two other things that we need to figure out, and that is how am I gonna get networking to the board and how am I going to get power to the board? Now, networking is pretty straightforward as well. Networking, you can either use the built-in Ethernet port and just run it Ethernet to your switch or to your wall outlet and then run it through your house or whatever it might be. Or you can use Wi-Fi. And of course, 
the boards that we looked at, one had Wi-Fi and one didn't. And now for the one that didn't, I just use a USB dongle and that will allow me to use Wi-Fi on the board once I have the dongle plugged in. And if it has built-in Wi-Fi, of course you can use that to connect it to a network. So the last thing to figure out is of course, power. Now the most obvious solution is to use the AC adapter that you probably already have and that you simply plug into the wall and then plug it into the power jack on your board and you're up and running. Now, another alternative for power might be to use an AC outlet that also has USB outlets on it as well. For this, you would either replace an existing outlet with something that looks like this, or you could run a new power run and then put in a handy box with one of these guys on it. And then you can then plug in a USB cable and then power your board using the USB outlet for this. And this might be useful for uh, places where you don't have existing USB power or existing power at all, and you're just installing it for the first time. Now, my favorite solution would be to use the same cable for both power and for networking. Now, a board doesn't support this out of the box, but there is a way that you can use PoE with a board like a Raspberry Pi, and that's to use a PoE splitter like this one right here. Now, the way these work is you have a PoE hub or a PoE injector, and what that does is it uses one of the pairs on the cable for power. And so you run a piece of ethernet from the PoE hub or injector into the splitter, and the splitter then splits off the data from the power. And you then plug the power into the, the jack for the power, and then you would plug the ethernet cable into the ethernet jack on the board, and you get the same results as if you were running this as separate power and a separate networking, but it's using the same cable to both power and to network the device. So the last thing I want to talk about is cost. Now cost can uh, vary widely on this particular project, depending on what hardware components you use. In all cases though, you're probably not going to save money by doing this. Now there's some satisfaction in building your own camera and you might want to build a camera for a specific setup that you might have, but still you're really not saving money by doing this. So uh, if you want to save money, don't build your own camera, just buy one off of Amazon. But if you want to build your own camera, be prepared to spend a little bit more for one of these than you would for something that you might just buy that's purpose built. So the breakdown of the cost just depends on the components you get. So a dev board is going to cost you between 45 and $90. Now the Raspi 4s are about $90 right now on Amazon. And this has been coming down in recent months. They were real expensive for a while. And those, those, those prices fluctuate depending on the demand for them, but they're a really popular board. So they tend to go up in price as demand for them gets higher. So a lot of these alternatives have really caught on because of that. So the Rock 4C Plus is a great alternative to a Raspi 4. It supports the Raspi cameras as well. And the Libre Renegade is a great board too. Um, it is a board that would work with USB cameras and you could probably get the La Potato board, which is even cheaper than $45. However, I haven't tested that. So I can't really speak to how well it would work, but it's probably gonna work for a USB camera anyway. So be prepared to spend between 45 and $90 for a dev board. Now the camera is also going to vary widely depending on which camera you get. Now you can get a $10 USB camera like I got, and you can also get a $90 USB camera like I have as well. Depends on what you need. Now the $10 one would probably work just fine for most applications. If you want a higher quality picture, get the higher end camera. But in reality, you can probably spend something that's in the middle of that. And the Raz Pi cameras are certainly gonna be in the middle of that too. And those are pretty high quality cameras. Those will go anywhere between like 10 and 50 bucks, depending on which one you get. Now, beyond these, the rest of this stuff is kind of discretionary. And you might even have some of this stuff laying around like an AC adapter. Now, an old phone charger will work for some of these boards. I bought a nicer AC adapter for my Rock 4 and um, it cost me about 10 bucks or 15 bucks for that. And it's putting out about three and a half amps at five volts, which is more than enough to power that board. Higher end boards typically require more power. So you need a better AC adapter than what you typically get with a phone charger. However, a phone charger will probably work on a lower end board. And you probably have a bunch of those laying around your house. A USB Wi-Fi adapter is going to be in the mix if you want to use Wi-Fi and your board doesn't have built-in Wi-Fi. So you can get one for about 10 to 12 bucks. Uh, those are typically slower than what you would probably put into a PC, but they're going to work fine for a dev board that you're going to be using for video streaming. Of course, you can spend more on that, but you don't need more than $10 or $12 for a USB Wi-Fi adapter for this application. So I wouldn't spend more than that. Now, if you're going to be doing PoE, a PoE splitter 
is going to be about 10 to 20 bucks. So uh, you can discount the AC adapter and use a PoE splitter, but you still have to have a PoE hub or a PoE switch or a PoE injector to power that. And a dev board is going to require uh, about three to um, between one and three amps typically. So you'll have to make sure that your uh, particular switch or your injector will put out that much power that the board can consume. In any case, the PoE splitter would be about 10 to $20. And so that's just one of those things that adds into the total cost of one of these devices. Now there's some things I didn't mention like an SD card. Now those of course can be anywhere from five to 20 bucks depending on the capacity and the quality and the speed and all that uh, for the SD card. And I didn't mention an enclosure. If you wanted to put this outside or put this in some kind of space where you're going to uh, mount this, you probably want to get some kind of enclosure so you can spend anywhere between five and 50 bucks, depending on the kind of enclosure you you get. Now the conclusion that I got is this little guy right here probably doesn't show up. It's just a, an outdoor weatherproof box that if you wanted to put it into a weatherproof situation, you can, it's got a seal on it and then you can put the camera gear in there. I drilled a hole in the bottom of it to run the cables into, and then you can mount the camera in there. You can mount the board in there and then wire it all up and then run the cables out to the hole and then put some uh, glue around the bottom or some kind of caulk or some kind of hot glue just to seal it all up. And then you can mount it outside and then you can power it depending on what kind of power solution you want to use. If you're running just straight AC, you can run a drop quarter, you can do PoE or whatever it might be, but you can power it uh, in that enclosure and it just protects the camera and the board from the conditions if you're going to mount it outside or even internally if you want to do it for that. So all of this together, it's going to cost you between 80 and $200. And like I said, that's really not that great for a camera. You can get some really nice cameras for 80 bucks and you can get some really nice 4k cameras for 80 bucks and you can get some really, really nice cameras for 200 bucks. So again, you're not saving money by doing this. So if you want to just build your own camera, great, do it, spend the money, have your own camera and just be satisfied with what you have. But again, don't do this as a cost saving mechanism because you're not going to save money by building your own cameras. So again, this is the first video in a multi-part series that we're going to be doing on this particular topic. Now this video will look at hardware. The next video we'll do, will look at the software and components that you will need to set up a device that you would use with something like a DVR or NVR. So look forward to that video. But if you like this video, please look forward to the new video and also like and share this and also share it with your friends. And thanks for watching. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at The One Mule. And as always, thanks for watching.